Hey everybody, in this series we're going to be looking at the basics of artificial intelligence. More specifically, we're going to be creating what you can see on screen right now, which is an AI version of the Chrome Dinosaur game that plays by itself. Now in order to do this, we're going to be using perhaps one of the most famous algorithms that exists, which is the NEAT algorithm. NEAT is an acronym that stands for Neuroevolution of Augmented Topologies and it was invented by this handsome dude that goes by the name of Kenneth Stanley, a computer scientist and professor at the University of Texas. We're going to learn all about the algorithm that he invented throughout this series, but let me show you how this series is going to be structured first. In this episode, we're going to set up our editor and display our dinosaur on our screen. In the second episode, we're going to create a playable version of the game that we can play ourselves, so the dinosaur will jump every time we press the spacebar. In the third episode, it isn't going to be us playing anymore because we're going to be adding the AI to the game. And then finally, in the fourth episode, we're going to create some visualizations and we're going to be adding a couple of statistics to the game. All right, so let's get started. Remember that a link to the code is going to be linked down in the description. So over here, I have PyCharm open with a new project folder called Chrome Dinosaur AI. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to import all the assets, which means all the images that we're going to use into our project folder. If we have a quick look through the folder, you can see we have all the images. We have the cactus, we have the dinosaur images, and in addition to that, we also have the floor on which the dinosaur runs. So we're simply going to drag and drop this folder into our project and accept the dialog box. There, now we're done. And in the project, you can now clearly see that we have all the assets that we saw before in our project. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to install the necessary modules for our project. So let's open up the terminal and check what modules we have installed. We do this by typing in the command pip list. And you'll see that by default, we have two modules installed. But we're gonna need two additional modules. The first one is Pygame, so let's install Pygame. And after a brief moment, we should have it. The second module we're going to require is neat. So let's go ahead and write in pip install neat minus python and press enter. So now if we check the installed modules by checking pip list, you'll see that we have all the necessary modules installed. Neat python and pygame. The next thing we need to do is simply add a main file to our editor. And now we're good to go. Okay, we're going to start off by importing Pygame, OS, Random, and Sys. After we've imported these packages, we're going to move on to initialize Pygame by simply writing pygame.init. Now we're going to define a couple of global constants. These are going to be the screen height, which is going to be 600 pixel, the screen width, which is going to be 1100 pixels, and we're also going to define the screen in which we're going to display our game. Then we're going to import the images of our dinosaur running and jumping, as well as the background for our game. Then we're going to have one final global constant, which is going to be a font. And this is the font that we're going to use to display the text in our game. Now we're going to define the main method. We're going to define the variable clock, which we're going to use later. And then we're going to create the main loop, which is going to help us keep the game running. Now in the main loop, we want to include the standardized code block for exiting the game. And of course, after every while loop iteration, we want to reset the screen. So we're going to do this by including the screen fill. And then at the end, we're going to write clock tick. And in the parentheses, we're going to add the number of frames per second, which is going to be 13 in our case. And at the end of our while loop, we want to update the display. Now we can go ahead and call the main method and run the code. And you'll see that we get a blank screen, which is going to be the canvas for our game. And as you would expect, we can exit this window by simply pressing on the red cross. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to get the dinosaur onto our screen. So we're first going to create a class and call it dinosaur. We're going to define three constant values for the dinosaur, which are going to be the X position on the screen, the Y position on the screen, and the velocity at which he jumps. In the dinosaur class, we are going to have five functions. The first function is going to be the init function, 
we're gonna have an update function, a jump function, a run function, and finally, a draw function. Now in the init function, we want to set the state of the dinosaur as soon as he is created. Starting off with his image, which is being passed in as an argument into the init function, we're gonna set self.image equal to image. When we create a dinosaur, we don't want him to be jumping by default, we only want him to be running by default. So we're gonna set dino run to true and dino jump to false. Then we're gonna set the jumping velocity equal to the value we defined above. In order to implement the jumping function further down the line, we need to have coordinates that we can manipulate. To get these coordinates, we are simply going to create an object for storing rectangular coordinates by using the rect function. So basically, what this line over here does is simply put a rectangle around the image of our dinosaur. And the x and y position over here correspond to the top left-hand corner of our dinosaur image. The last thing we're going to add in this init function is a step index that we're going to set to zero by default. As we'll see in a moment, this index simply helps us loop through the images of our dinosaur to make it look as if he's running. Now in the update function, we are going to check for the state of the dinosaur. If the dinosaur is running, it will execute the run function. If we press the spacebar and the dinosaur is set to jump, then the jumping function will be executed. And the final thing we're going to add over here is a reset for our step index. This is going to become useful for animating the dinosaur, but we'll see why we use this in a second when we look at the run function. In the jump function, we're going to add the mechanics that allow our dinosaur to jump. Now, since I don't want to make this video too long, we're not going to look at the details of how to make the dinosaur jump. Because in the series, we want to be concentrating on the AI and get to that part. But if you're new to Pygame and want to understand more about how to make the dinosaur jump, then I recommend watching the video that I made on jumping. I'll be leaving a link to this video down in the description right below the like button. Now, the run function is going to be responsible for the default running motion of our dinosaur. The default running motion of our dinosaur only requires for the images to be displayed sequentially. Now, remember that step index that we mentioned in the update function? This is exactly where it becomes handy. The step index basically counts to 10, and for the first five counts, it displays the first image of the dinosaur, and for the next five counts, it displays the second image of the dinosaur. And after a total of 10 counts, it resets. And this happens over and over again and makes it look like our dinosaur is running. And last but not least, we have the draw function. This is quite simply where we display the image onto our screen, which over here is being done by the blit function. All right, so that is our dinosaur class done. All we need to do now is to make some adjustments to our main function, and then we will have our dinosaur on our screen. In the main function, we simply create an object of the class dinosaur. We then need to update and draw the dinosaur on our screen. Then we're going to allow for a user input. Specifically, every time we press the spacebar, we want the dinosaur to jump. So we set the user input equal to pygame.key.getPressed. And finally, the last thing we need to do is we need to set the state of the dinosaur to jump whenever we press the spacebar which we do using this code block. Now, I wanna be really clear about one thing that might seem a little bit odd at the moment. You'll see that in the main function in the code we just wrote, we have the possibility to add multiple dinosaurs. Now you can see this because I created a dinosaurs list, which at the moment only has one element. The reason why I've created the possibility to create multiple dinosaurs is because we want to add the AI on top of this game later on. And in the AI implementation, we will see that every generation has multiple dinosaurs. Now you can see this really clearly on the footage that you see right now on screen. You can clearly see that there are multiple dinosaurs. But we're not that far yet. At the moment, I only want to show you that we have a playable version of this game. To see this, let's go ahead and simply run the code. As you can see, we have the dinosaur, and when I press the spacebar, he can jump. All right, so we're gonna leave it here for this episode. In the next episode, we're going to be finishing off the game. And after we finish the game, we're going to move on to add the AI to the game. If these videos help you out, then make sure to let me know with a like rating down below, and I'll make more of these in the future.